Your questions about business, career, personal development, and achieving the American dream are more than welcome. Email them to info at makingitnow.com. Now back to more Making It with Tommy and Todd. We're back with Tommy and Todd coast to coast, and it is time for Making It or Breaking It. Brittany, what's making it and breaking it? Okay, awesome discussion today for making it or breaking it. And we are discussing is training of employees oversold. Now, I have a lot of different angles to discuss, to discuss about this. Yes, this is And a good I know one. you <laughs> Todd's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> So, uh, which one of you would like to set it off in a specific direction Let's just first? leave Brittany out of this one. She'll you take guys, I yeah. got it, show. I got it. Let, let, let me go with this one. Let me go with this Okay, one. so let's get this clear. What we're saying is, you know, are you able to train? Did you say, all you need to do is just train employees and then they'll be great. Training they'll be is what the you key. want? They'll be what you want. What about when they request the training and then like right. they use that to waste your time? So what go about ahead, that? Tommy. What what, about what's that? your thought on it? Well, employees are the biggest asset of every company. They should Let's be. Let's face it. They should be. Uh, and they are. And they can also be the biggest liability yes, of they can. every company. Uh, you know, there are as many companies that have litigation with their own employees as they do with outside people. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are all sorts of issues uh, connected with employees. Uh, so uh, you really have to uh, look at employees as your most important people and one of your publics, if you will. They're as important as your customer, sometimes more important, and so on. Uh, so the question is, uh, should you spend a lot of time and effort and money and resources training people, or should you just assume that they should come in and know how to do the job and and do the job well. Okay, well, let me summarize this in a semi-politically correct way. Mm -hmm. Um, The way I think about employees, I now look at pre-screening on character. Not only am I going to hire somebody, but how much I want to then invest in them. Right. And I liken it a lot to like the military and the special forces. Um, for me to actually really invest and, and want to pay the company's money to put a lot of skill and, and you know training into someone um, and invest in, in having them trained, for me, they have to be on that special forces level where they've gone through the basic training of the company, they've proven their worth, they've proven they're an asset, they've tr- proven their value, they've proven their loyalty, right. they've proven their character right. on a personal level, right. and then we can go to the next level of training in that special forces manner. So that's really the best analogy that, that I can use to explain the way I look at um, the necessity and the value of training employees training. and investing in training employees. Training people who aren't right for the job is oversold. And a lot of people are wrong for the job. Mm -hmm. So you're putting training into people who aren't going to produce uh, the results you want. And so that's what's really oversold, I think. Yeah. Because training someone who is uh, the right person and highly trainable Mm -hmm. will yield benefits. But by and large, as you were saying, the selection process right. is what's weak with most right. companies. This is not everybody gets a ribbon. This is not everybody gets a So the wrong people get in. By and large, I would say, you know, over 75% of the wrong people get into companies. But it's a great money maker. I, I, I've heard it said before that you you train dogs and you educate people. And, and I think that's maybe where the disconnect is sometimes. Uh, employers feel if they, they bring a person in and they teach them to do a job that they are trained uh, rather than educating uh, about what you really do, what you really expect from them, um, allowing them and and giving them the latitude to be thinkers in your business uh, rather than just uh, doing mundane tasks uh, repeatedly. Yeah, it's, um, you know, when I go out, look outside my office at um, 450, I start seeing cars pulling out, uh, 459, uh, they're pulling out. The parking lot's pretty much and And empty. by the way, they probably came in at 9.05 right. or 9.10. The parking lot's pretty much, <laughs> it's pretty. It's really empty by 6.30. It just amazes me every day. And I, and I think to myself, uh, these, uh, most people by and large don't like their jobs. Right. And so they're kind of like halfway there, you know, um, 
when they're in training, like a lot of employees take training as just like a, a, a vacation from actually having to get to work. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so it's so it's about the selection process because someone who actually likes that job, who wants to work, they will value the training. Right. So are we talking about the difference between a career mindset and a job mindset and an entrepreneurial mindset? Uh, you know, people watching the clock, making sure they get out yes. at five o'clock on the dot and so on. Because the oversold part is training companies are overselling that training is the answer when actually selection and replacement is the answer more so. Oh, that's you good. Know, so it needs to be, you know, teach you how to replace people and how to how to select the right people with the right criteria right. in order to now get a benefit out of your training. Not everybody so they gets They just a push ribbon. training. I, I think uh, uh, what you're saying is in many instances, the, um, the actual employer will select the people and then they'll bring in outsiders to train them or educate them. Right. And the same with continuing education with. But they the really company. didn't select well. You right. know, it was under fire, especially small businesses. Exactly. Uh, you know, just hiring under without all the proper parameters. Sure. So that's it for today's show. Uh, where can they get us at, Brittany? Okay, you can check out all our social media accounts by going to our website, makingitnow.com, and you can pick up our Twitter feed, Facebook, Instagram, and also check out our new YouTube channel and all the behind the scenes on our green screens here. That's right. Get involved with making it. We're here to help you. That's it for today's show. This is Tommy and Todd. Thanks for joining us, America, and keep making it. This has been Making It. The source for information, insights, interviews, and in-the-trench advice for startups, struggling, and early-stage entrepreneurs and business owners nationwide. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, staff, management, or advertisers. For more information, contact Tommy or Todd at 855-MAKING-IT. That's 855-625-4648. Or at their email address, info at makingitnow.com. Thank you for listening to Making It.